This short video is to explain why police non-disclosure of many of the case photographs has an impact on the conviction of Jeremy Bamber for killing his parents, twin nephews, and his sister, Sheila Caffell. At 10 a.m. on the morning of the 7th of August, 1985, Detective Constable Bird, a member of Essex Police Service, started to take photographs of the scene at White House Farm, Tolsant Darcy, Essex, where five people had died of gunshot injuries. DC Bird said in a statement that he was instructed by Detective Inspector Ron Cook to take photographs of every room of the house. The standard procedure for a police photographer is to take pictures from each corner of each room in the direction of the centre so that the full aspect of the scene can be determined. However, there are at least five rooms of which no photographic evidence has ever been disclosed. This includes the box room where a rifle was spotted propped up in the window. There were two independent witnesses to this sighting. Firearms officers W.P.C. Japes and P.C. Brown. Both testified independently of one another and observed the rifle from different vantage points. Was this the same rifle that was found on Sheila's chest just 15 or so minutes later? In preparation for the trial, Essex Police compiled seven photographic albums of limited images to show the jury. These albums contained a total of 118 photographs and x-rays and appear to have been chosen selectively in ways that could be construed as misleading. But the defence only discovered this after 2002 when more photographs were eventually disclosed. Since 2001, there have been three official disclosures of the case photographs by Essex Police to the defence. On the 9th of October 2002, Mr John McLeod, a forensic expert for the defence, examined 58 rolls of photographic film. He viewed 429 negatives and concluded that 249 frames had been cut from the 58 rolls of film. On the 1st of October 2008, Peter Suthurst, a forensic expert for the defence, examined 58 rolls of photographic film at the offices of the Criminal Cases Review Commission. He viewed 416 negatives and concluded that 262 frames had been cut from the rolls of film. In 2011, the Criminal Cases Review Commission disclosed 58 rolls of film to another forensic company working for the defence. They viewed 406 negatives and concluded that 272 frames had been cut from the 58 rolls of film that had been disclosed. When these case negatives were disclosed, they should have been in complete lengths of 10 frames per strip. However, they were not all in complete strips. Instead, many of these strips had been cut up and images had been removed from the beginning, the middle and or the end of some of the strips. A complaint was lodged with the Criminal Cases Review Commission, the CCRC, regarding the images that had been cut from the strips of photographic film, a fact supported by forensic scientist Peter Suthurst for the defence. The response from the CCRC regarding this issue gives further rise 
to serious concerns about the integrity and impartiality of the Commission because in 2012 the CCRC said in their preliminary statement of reasons quote Mr. Easterbrook the head of Essex Police Photographic Department at the time stated that it was practice that this portion of clear unexposed film which had no evidential value was cut off and disposed at the time meaning in 1985 whilst the remainder was sleeved in clear acetate for protection end quote that explanation can only have been untrue as the Essex police photographer David Bird who had taken the photographs expressed his surprise about this when he was asked about it in 2012. Is it believable that DC Bird, an experienced police photographer, took 673 photographs and out of these 272 frames were unexposed? Nevertheless, if the CCRC had bothered to follow up this complaint, they would have uncovered that in 2001, the Metropolitan Police team, who investigated for the prosecution ahead of Jeremy Bamber's 2002 appeal, had raised a number of actions on the photographic issue. Action 81 recorded, quote, established from Essex Police if there are any negatives in existence from all the photographs taken during the Bamber inquiry. Result, dated the 6th of November 2001, the negatives have been located, viewed, and the following. Eight albums of all photographs. The negatives will be retained by Essex Police at our request. End quote. Action 85 stated, quote, Following my attendance at the photographic section, Essex Police Headquarters, I can say that all negatives in the inquiry have been well preserved and are retained in original uncut strips. 31st of October 2001, Mr. Goss. End quote. Therefore, in 2001, the photograph negatives had been well preserved and were retained in their original uncut strips. A statement that suggests that Mr. Eastbrook appears to have misled the Criminal Cases Review Commission, the CCRC, when he stated that it was standard practice to cut up the negatives at the time to remove clear images. This has prompted the concern that prior to disclosure to the defence in 2011, the negative strips had been tampered with. However, the Commission, the CCRC, failed to investigate this possibility as they should have done. Instead, they considered Mr. Eastbrook's explanation for cutting up the negative strips was a reasonable one. Quote, The CCRC conclude that all photographs were disclosed and that Bamba has made an erroneous assumption that each negative strip should contain ten photographs. On the occasion when negative strips have been cut short, the subject matter is not of significance to the issues which may affect the safety of the conviction. End quote. The CCRC were wrong to say this, as how could they possibly know if the images cut from these strips of negatives were significant or not, or if they might affect the safety 
of Jeremy Bamber's conviction. The CCRC should have visited the Essex Police Photograph Storage Department and physically requested to look at the strips of film themselves and not simply accepted as fact the word of Essex Police about this. With this evidence, it seems safe to say that Essex Police have never disclosed all the case photographs to Jeremy Bamber, his defence team, the campaign in his defence, or the Criminal Cases Review Commission. Because there are so many discrepancies in the police material, we are unable to place an exact number on the total of undisclosed images that they have withheld. And more examples of missing images are emerging on a regular basis as the case evidence is studied further by Jeremy and his legal team. So why is all this important to a 33-year-old conviction of someone who is never going to be released from prison? Well, it's very difficult to get a case to appeal and extremely difficult for someone as impoverished as Jeremy Bamber. One of the reasons his conviction happened in the first place and why it has been upheld for so long is because without full disclosure of all the evidence, getting back into the court of appeal is difficult and remote. Non-disclosure also made the original trial biased in favour of the prosecution because keeping photographic evidence from the defence prevents the right to a fair trial. So what photographs are still missing which are important to Jeremy's fight for freedom? The prosecution argued that Sheila Caffell's hands were spotlessly clean and had no blood on them. Yet high resolution copies of some of the disclosed images of Sheila that were made available eventually in 2011 revealed that there was blood on her fingers. Essex police have never disclosed any photographs that show the palms of Sheila's hands, yet it is very unlikely that they were not photographed. The prosecution also told the jury that Sheila's feet were, quote, spotlessly clean. But one photograph reveals Sheila also had blood spots on the sole of her left foot. But no photographs of the sole of her right foot have been made available. If Jeremy Bamber shot and killed Sheila Caffell, why did she have blood spots on her feet? Was it because she walked around the house after shooting the family and before taking her own life? DC Bird took photographs of the bodies in situ in an unwashed and washed condition at the mortuary. Two independent forensic pathologists, formally instructed by the defence, have recently confirmed that many important photographs that should be present are missing from the disclosed material. In addition, several images were taken of the rifle at the scene, which suggest that it had been moved from resting on Sheila's body and then placed in the window prior to the timing on the official version of when the rifle had been taken from Sheila's body and made safe. Essex Police maintained to the 1991 City of London Police investigation of their conduct and to the 2002 appeal judges that the first photograph taken of the sound moderator was on the 11th of November 1985. The sound moderator 
is a device that is fixed to the end of a rifle to reduce the high frequency sound of the shot when it is fired. Examination of the case material reveals that Essex police seem to have not told the full story as we have discovered that a minimum of four separate photographs were taken of sound moderators prior to the 11th of November 1985. None of these images taken by forensic scientists has been disclosed. The sound moderator was key evidence used to convict Jeremy Bamba. So it is of utmost importance that these photographs are handed over to the defence. One example of a very recent discovery that further highlights the lack of disclosure was made whilst analysing the police home's computer indexes for Jeremy's case. It was discovered that Essex police have withheld an astounding number of photographs relating to the Bible that was found next to Sheila Caffell's body on the morning of the tragedies. This Bible contained a note which went missing and it included fingerprints in blood on some of the pages. The index states, and I quote, 252 loose photographs of fingerprints stroke marks on the Bible pages. End quote. Whose fingerprints were these? Urgent disclosure is required of this vital evidence because it is unlikely that these prints belong to Jeremy Bamba. If they did, then the prosecution would have used this evidence against Jeremy at his trial. Were these prints Sheila Caffell's? After she had killed the family in a psychotic episode? Furthermore, this index contains additional evidence that Essex police had a substantial number of images of sound moderators and post-mortem photographs which have also never been disclosed.